Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren and the new Mega Dungeon Tezavesh is available as of servers going live for the season 2 of the patch 9.1. In this video we're gonna go over the hard mode version of the dungeon, but also talk about the normal mythic version because the hard mode simply just adds one or two extra mechanics that might make this place challenging. In order for you to get as easy of a time to get into the new content, get your hard mode mounts and collect any of your transmogs and any of that 233 gear. So without further ado, let's dive into how to unlock the hard mode, as well as talk about some of the bosses on hard mode. To unlock the hard mode of the dungeon, you first need to go into Tezavesh on Mythic, and you have to slay the first boss in order to proceed towards the Oasis Club. Before you enter the club, stop by here right after defeating the first boss, and talk to the questionable trader to get a set of fraudulent credentials from him. Then do the mini game in order to enter the Oasis Club, which is kind of like a mini trading game of delivering goods to certain vendors until one of them gives you the password to enter the club. Once you make it into the club, go down the stairs on the left, there should be an NPC on one of the couches. Talk to them to begin the quest to start this dungeon on hard mode. Run out of the dungeon and reset it, and when you first enter, you have to talk to an NPC at the start of the instance in order to begin the hard mode version. Use the necklace you've gotten originally, the fraudulent credentials, to take on an appearance of a broker. Approach the first boss, and then the hard mode dungeon begins. The first boss on the hard mode, Zofex, will actually start off with an extra ad to aid him. Nuke down the ad very quickly, but you can mostly focus down on the boss. The difference between the hard mode and the normal version of this boss is you'll have a much smaller space to do the fight with, as there will be adds on the side that you really don't want to pull because it'll make the boss fight harder. That means all the blades that he throws down spinning on the ground, that's going to crowd the space a little bit. When he disarms you, it might put your weapon where the blade is, also going to be a little claustrophobic. And finally, when he imprisons a player, you'll want to run across the boss towards the opposite side of the room in order to give your allies as much room in order to take you out of the imprisonment, in order to break up the boss mechanic, positionals are going to be very important, and this fight is very unfriendly to melee. I recommend bloodlusting this boss and nuking them down as soon as possible, because the amount of space you have to work with isn't a lot, and eventually he's just going to crowd that corner of the map with a lot of blades. The next two bosses can be done in any order, but the one I'm going to go over first is going to be the Oasis Hard Mode boss. This fight is about the same as the original one, but all you have to do is deal with one extra set of adds with unique mechanics. If you go into the dungeon, you will see that originally there's a band of Venthyr playing instruments for the brokers and they get kicked out, and you are their replacement. So those guys get upset at you for the hard mode, and now they'll be present in the fight with their own mechanics. All of them will fixate on the different player depending on the instrument that you pick up, but most of them don't have too crazy of mechanics. They have AoE damage, they have a runaway mechanic, they have a frontal cone, as well as one interrupt mechanic. But those guys didn't have that much health when we tested it on PTR, so I doubt they're going to have that much more health in the hard mode Tezavesh. The rest of the boss is make sure you don't stand on top of your allies when there's a circle around you, make sure if you're getting sucked towards the boss you run away, and make sure you're not standing in any of the boss's frontals, and make sure to lend your interrupts. Overall, a pretty easy fight. Next is going to be Mailroom Mayhem Hard Mode. This fight is exactly the same as normal Mythic. The boss will throw out these vials that will make puddles on the ground if nobody absorbs them. Then there will be also a gold stack where he'll throw a bunch of gold players need to stack together. He'll do a whirlwind ability where melee will have to back up otherwise they take damage. And then the final mechanic of unstable goods. Every so often boss will throw around these boxes that are ready to blow up. Letting these boxes tick out means group wide damage which is basically a wipe. These boxes, however, can be picked up and you can chuck them into a delivery portal in order to get rid of them. But if any of these boxes miss the delivery portal and hit the ground, also group wide damage, you can pass it to other players in order to make sure they don't hit the ground. The hard mode version is once you're standing with a box and you have it picked up, you can't move. So you have to coordinate with other players in order to deliver through other players these boxes in order to get them out of the dungeon through the delivery portals. Don't do what I did, just throw them on the ground. So for us, we found honestly the best way to do this boss is to ignore the mechanics and just nuke the boss. The amount of health they had on PTR was not that much and we felt like we could just blast through the boss's health, ignore mechanics for the most part with bloodlust and everything. That might be a viable strategy if your group has enough item level, but otherwise this fight is going to be pretty hectic with a lot of coordination. So just prepare yourself for this fight to hurt. 
The fourth boss is going to be the Menagerie. The Menagerie is kind of like a gauntlet where you fight the first boss, then you fight the second boss, and then you fight the last boss. And the mechanics of the first boss transition into the second boss fight, and then second and first boss mechanics transition into the last boss fight. The hard mode version is all these bosses are on a timer, so if you're not fast enough killing the first boss, you'll need to deal with two of them at a time, and if you're too slow, you'll need to deal three of them at a time. The normal version will simply rotate the bosses. Once the first is dead, the second comes out. The first boss mechanic has a couple of them. One is going to be a player is going to get debuffed by a player and they'll start doing damage to other players, but they are also able to gather anima. That'll be very important for the second boss when he comes out. The first boss will also segment parts of the rune to make these blue orbs drop. Just make sure you're not standing in those at all. The second boss is going to debuff two players with wide circles. Get them out of the group and have somebody dispel you or use immunities in order to deal with the damage easier. The second mechanic the second boss will do is start spawning anima orbs out of him. If you get touched by these orbs as a player, you will do less damage to everybody. But if you're someone with the debuff from the first boss, the big swirly blue, you can actually collect anima orbs instead and gain a buff. That debuff from the first boss also jumps between players, and after it comes out, it'll jump to the nearest player. So whoever has the blue debuff basically is trying to play Pac-Man the whole time. The final boss of the Menagerie will spawn in after 65 seconds when the encounter begins, and you'll want to make sure either the first or the second boss are dead before she comes out. She has a couple mechanics. First of all, she'll chain players, and you want to break through those chains in order to be able to get out. If you have ways to break out of roots and slows, you should be able to use those as a class as well. Or if you have any immunities, because those chains do have a health bar. Outside of that, the boss will do this massive suction ability where you do not want to be next to her. You want to be as far as you can while still performing all the other mechanics from the other bosses. Next boss is going to be So Osmi. It's an interesting boss that will literally make you think with portals. The lower the boss's health, the more the room will get segmented. First, there will be a wall across like half the room. And then once the boss drops low enough health, it'll be another. So the room will be split into four quarters. You can't bypass these walls unless with certain abilities like Mage Blink, for example. You also will have portals and these portals will be in three different pairs. You have the squares, circles and triangles. So walking into one triangle portal puts you at the end of another triangle portal. So chasing after this boss through these portals is going to be very important. Finally, the boss is going to perform a cast called Triple Technique. On normal version, you just have to interrupt it three times. On hard mode, you have to interrupt it three times within 10 seconds because the cast is going to be, let's say, 10 seconds long. The first interrupt happens at the seven mark. That means the second cast is going to be seven seconds long. And if you interrupt it at a three second mark, that means the third cast will be at three seconds long duration. So basically have 10 seconds to land three interrupts. The hard mode of this boss doesn't really change it too much. You just have to be a little bit more careful with the portals and coordinating your interrupts, making sure that you actually land them. But the rest of the boss, whether it's normal mode or hard mode, is going to be pretty much a big brain teaser. The next boss is Hillbrand. Hillbrand will have some frontals where the tank will make need to make sure to face it away from the rest of the party. You also have laser beams chasing players which will leave puddles. So try to run those laser beams out from on the outside of the room. Don't put them in the center. The boss is also going to spawn a couple different ads. On normal version there are two ads that will buff up the boss and will also lock out certain consoles. You want to make sure to defeat those guys as soon as you can. And you can CC those ads in order to prevent them from giving the boss a debuff to make him take less damage. Crowd control on them so you can do more damage to the boss is going to be advised. On hard mode, he'll spawn an extra ad that needs to be interrupted. That ad is really not that difficult to deal with. And as long as you have a kick once in a while, you should be able to nuke it down. After a little bit of time, the boss will transition where he'll make you perform this puzzle game. It will spawn four orbs of different colors and you need to take those orbs to four different consoles at the corners of the room. There's also a panel at the front of the room that tells you the order in where these orbs got to go. Communication is going to be key because if you insert an orb into the wrong panel, your whole group will take a pretty nasty dot, which in some cases, if your healer isn't careful, is going to mean basically a wipe. The pirate boss is not that different from the original version on hard mode. In fact, if you've done Nighthold back in Legion and you have ever fought Elisan, there's actually an Elisan like mechanic in this fight where the boss will create a bubble of slowed time. Simply just make sure you're not in there because it will slow down your character's actions. 
There's a couple different mechanics though for the normal mode where the tank needs to be facing the boss towards the ads. The ads have no aggro table whatsoever, so they'll run around chasing after players. The boss, however, will do a frontal where they'll be able to blast anybody in front of them, even the ads. So that's the easiest way to take care of those ads facing them where the boss is. As a melee, do not stand behind the boss. You will get hooked by the tail. It is a dragon boss, so treat it like a real dragon boss. Also on PTR, the boat does fire off a chain to try to hook players and pull them closer to the boat. Be careful when that happens, especially when it comes to dodging frontals. There's a lot of hectic situations happening in this fight. Lots of just hectic events and moments. So nuking down the boss as quickly as you can is going to be advised. The next boss is Solia, the final boss of the encounter. And there's only a couple of mechanics that are different from the normal version and the hard mode version. In the first phase, the boss is going to summon ads, which need to be interrupted, but also need to be nuked down. They can be crowd control. It's just going to be outgoing group wide damage in this fight as well. So just make sure as a healer, you're prepared. Also, the boss will spawn a collapsing star, which will start to grow into supernova. And the player needs to touch the star in order to gas it. Every time you touch the star and gas it, it'll put a dot on everybody in your party and on hard mode, this dot hurts quite a bit. The first two times the player touches the star, however, is going to put a debuff on him, which will make him take more damage from subsequent star tags. So when you gas on of the star, make sure you have a group order. Every time somebody touches the star, it'll also do a suction towards the star as well. So putting the boss as far away from the star is also advised. Eventually, the boss, after you get him low enough, will transition into phase two, where the boss will regain her health and go into this Archon mode if you've ever played StarCraft. And now the boss is going to be far more empowered. A lot of these mechanics are going to be the same. The thing you'll need to do with this boss is to break out five relics. You have to stand where these relics are and have a blast run through these relics all at once. The hard mode requires for all these relics to be broken at once, while the normal mode you can just break them one by one if you wish. To do the successful in hard mode, just make sure every single player is standing under one of the relics and then all of them will be broken at the same time. Afterwards, in phase two, it'll be the same similar mechanics as before, except the boss has a couple new interactions. First of all, the relics will fire off these blasts that will knock you back and you can get chained, knocked over and over and over into your death. The boss is also going to use this relics to block off parts of the room. So boss position is going to be very, very important and you still need to gas off that collapsing star also with the same debuffs and also with a suction in mechanic. From time to time, the boss is going to go into intermissions where you have to break up the relics all over again. So making sure that everybody in the right spot for these relics to break them as quickly as possible is advisable for the hard mode version of this dungeon. But the good news is if you are able to deal with all of these mechanics as a group and you can coordinate it all together, then the boss is slain and you can collect your rewards, which is some of the more powerful trinkets and items and sweet transmogs, especially some of the weapons from the Tezavesh dungeon, pets, as well as a mount just for doing the dungeon on hard mode. But also once you completed it on hard mode, you can go back to the Oasis Club to turn in your quest to the original broker that started the quest line and upgrade that necklace to a higher item level. And that necklace does come with an extra effect for extra stats proc to it. It's actually a pretty good necklace, definitely worth simming for your character. It has haste mastery on it last time I checked, and that should be a pretty good stat for a variety of you. But that extra proc for stats can also be really, really good. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Tezavesh. Good luck in getting your mounts, transmogs, and anything else you're trying to get from the hard mode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see all of you in the next one.